Hi, welcome to RSJ's first Ask the Expert session. I'm Heidi Wittenborn, a Senior Environmental Consultant with RSJ, and today I'm going to be talking about the SCIP database and how it's impacting IMDS. SCIP is an acronym for a very long name, Substances of Concern in Articles as Such or in Complex Objects Products. It's a heck of a lot easier to just say SCIP. The database was created through an amendment to the European Union's Waste Framework Directive. The goals are to help waste stream operators identify articles that contain SVHCs, substances of very high concern. It's to support the EU's goal of a circular economy. That's an economy in which there is little or no waste, every bit of waste becoming feedstock for a new product or new process. And it's also designed to give consumers better information about what's in the products they buy and use. This is a public database. Anybody in the EU can access it. That includes any consumer, any regulatory authority, and your competition. Data has to be in SCIP for all your parts by January 5th, 2021. That is very soon. And there is no discussion going on right now about letting that date slide due to any impacts of the COVID-19 virus on global marketplaces. There are discussions about letting some of the other provisions of the Waste Framework Directive slide a bit that are part of the recent amendments, but not this deadline. So consider it for now carved in stone. It's all about reporting REACH SVHCs. That stands for substances of very high concern, as I said. And these are calculated against the weight of the article. All of us in, who do work in IMDS are used to thinking about substances in homogeneous materials. And that applies to the end of life vehicle directive. It applies in other industries to the Ross directive. It does not apply to the REACH directive. The REACH directive is about the weight of the substance in the weight of the part. Originally, when REACH was passed, the article would have been the entire car. So the weight of any substance against the weight of an entire car pretty much made everything okay. In 2015, the European Court of Justice said, no, that's not how REACH should be interpreted. A car is an article, but it's made up of other articles, nuts, bolts, screws, capacitors, resistors, uh, seat belt buckles, seat belt straps, door frames, door panels, windshields, bumpers, each of, theirs, each of those things is an article in and of themselves, and we should be doing this REACH SVHC calculation against each of those individual articles. That's going to change when you have to declare something. So substances of concern under SCIP are the same thing as REACH SVHCs. Basically, what you're doing is you're taking the weight of the substance against the weight of the article, and if it's greater than 0.1%, you have a reportable substance. As you can see in the example, I've made the math easy. One gram over 10 grams is clearly greater than 0.1%, so you'd have to have, a, you'd have to report if that substance is present. Now, that's just a reporting threshold. That has nothing to do with whether you can use the substance, can't use the substance, how much of the substance you can have. You just reach the threshold that is the I've got to tell this substance is present. That's all it's about. Now in IMDS, for electronic components, we have the 019 semi-components. People call them 019s for short, and that's what I'm going to call them in this discussion. So these are shortcuts for entering data about electronic components so that you don't have to go line by line, substance by substance, for lots of little tiny parts, of which there could be hundreds in a car. But they don't work to do this REACH SVAC calculation to determine the weight of a substance against the weight of a, an electronic component, an electronic article. So because the SCIP database has made this even more important to do than it already was, the IMDS Steering Committee has decided to deactivate the 019s. As of July 1st, 2020, you will be not be able to use them in new MDSs, and there is no discussion about letting this deadline slide. 
They've already let it slide once. They were originally talking much earlier in the year, and they finally said it at Jul July 1st. Some customers are already rejecting MDSs that use the 019s. They're trying to get ahead of the curve, curve rather. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of them start saying, we need updated MDSs for active parts. If you use an 019 in an MDS we previously, previously accepted, and the part is still an active part, we're going to want you to update with individual components. So you can see the difference here in the tree structures. The 019 tree structure on the left is just a part, the capacitor, with a bunch of materials stacked under it through a semi-component. The subcomponent tree structure is the one we're used to seeing for a lot of different kinds of assemblies, and it shows that capacitor is actually made of a bunch of different pieces. So when you do the calculations, if you we're, we're looking at the lead, the text that's in red, I've set this up so that we have the same amount of lead in both situations, but the math will be very different. My results are entirely different. The re result is that the lead is at 3.3% of the weight of the ceramic encapsulation. And so suddenly I've got a declarable amount of lead. It's critical that you do this math against the right weight of an article. And you can see it can make a huge difference. That's why the 019s won't work anymore. So are they going to replace them? Well, the IMBS Steering Committee has been talking about possible ways to replace the 019s, but they haven't figured out a replacement that will make it sort of a shortcut, like the 019s are, and still allow the necessary skip database calculations. There's no guarantee that they'll ever find this replacement. You can't afford to wait. You're going to need to start collecting full material declarations via IMDS for all your electronic components. And if you've got somebody that you're buying from that's manufacturing parts that won't do IMDS, you're going to need an alternative full material declaration, and you're going to have to translate that into IMDS line by line. That's going to take time as well. So there's no time to sit and wait. We've got short deadlines, no guarantee that something will pop up to replace the 019s and you may have a lot of time on your hands to, needed to convert those alternate formats if that's what you end up getting. So in summary, skip database entry needs to be done by January 5th, 2021. By July 1st, the IMDS 019s are going to be deactivated. There's no current strategy to replace them. You've got to get full material declarations for your electronic components so you can do the necessary calculations. And the other problem we've got is that the electronics industry isn't used to reporting that way. They tend to report what are called flat bombs. They just say, I've got a capacitor and here are all the materials it's made from. So you're going to struggle with getting the data you need out of the electronics industry. Again, no clear strategy coming from them yet on how they're going to respond to the SCIP database. But you can't afford to wait. You're going to have to do the best you can now. If you have any questions or you need help, please contact me at my email, hwittenborn at rsjtechnical.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook. We will be posting more Ask the Expert sessions. We're always posting developments as they come up, trying to keep people up to date and keep you aware of what's happening in the product substance compliance arena. Thank you for your time today.